The comparison test is often kind of fiddly. And what's more, going into the comparison test, you usually have to have some kind of intuition about whether the series converges or diverges. That's not so bad in itself, but then when you use the comparison test, the intuition you have doesn't really make the comparison test easier to use. To make sense of that statement, let's go back to this, an example from a previous video. We decided before we applied the comparison test that we thought this series would diverge. And the basis behind that decision was that we decided that as n gets so large as n goes to infinity, these terms will look like these terms, and this series will therefore look like the harmonic series. But the intuition that this series will look like the harmonic series didn't help us find a smaller divergent series. We didn't say this series will look like the harmonic series, therefore we'll turn this one into a hundred and replace this seven with an n. The limit comparison test has the advantage that once you've gotten this intuition down, that this looks like this, you can then just run the limit comparison test without fiddling around any further. Here is the limit comparison test. Suppose we have two series where the terms are all positive. And suppose that the limit as n goes to infinity of the quotient of these terms is a um, positive number c. So the limit exists and is not to zero. Then these series either both converge or both diverge. Why this limit? Remember a theorem from, let me see, section 10.2, that if a series converges, any constant multiple of the series converges. And if a series diverges, any constant multiple of the series diverges. What this limit is telling you is that as n goes to infinity, these series are getting close to just being constant multiples of each other. The bigger n gets, the closer a sub n is to being this constant c times b sub n.